You're listening to Embrace Your Snake, the number one podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs that have big ideas and just need a little help to get them out into the world. I'm your host, Michael Jackson, and today we're talking about what to do after you defreak. Previously, we talked about getting rid of toxic people, internet connections, and TV. Now, let's talk about moving forward with your clean slate. Who and what will fill those empty slots? Let's talk about it. So we talked about getting rid of the toxic people in your life, getting rid of the toxic internet, getting rid of toxic TV. Now you've got space to add things into your brain and into your life. The first thing that I would do is really sit down and think about if you had your perfect world, who are the people that you would want to invite into your world? And the reason I say this is because you've got a choice of the people that you can actually invite in. You don't have to let everybody into your world. You could pick celebrities. You could pick sports stars. You could pick CEOs of big companies. You could pick local mom and pop stores. You could pick people that do ice skating. You could pick anybody in the world that you want to. You're not limited at all. And now that you've got rid of all the negative people in your life and the negative TV and the negative internet, why not fill that space with something that really makes you happy and pushes you toward the goals that you want to get toward? So if you want to start a bakery, why not go out and talk to people who have bakeries already and see if you can't meet them? Go to their shops, just sit inside smell the aroma, look at the customers, see who they are, and then eventually meet the people behind the counter, introduce yourself, maybe have lunch with them sometime, and then meet the owner. Meet that person who can inspire you, who can help you. They won't always see you as competition. They there by the way, let me and let me let me say this right up front. There is a misnomer, I believe, that people think that oh if I have a store that's like the store next to me, I better move somewhere else so that we don't compete with each other. And I think that that is wrong. I'll give you an example. In uh, Chicago, there is uh, Jewelers Row. Now, when you are in Chicago and you want to buy jewelry, the first place that you think about going is Jewelers Row. You know why? Because every jeweler in the world is there. You just go down the street. You don't have to go to, you know, Neiman Marcus, then Macy's, then Tiffany's, and then every place else around the country to find it because all the jewelers are in a row. Same with restaurants. We go to restaurant row, right? It's like, huh, we're going out for a really good night. Where are we going? Restaurant row because all the restaurants are there. So it helps all of the restaurants to be together and support each other. I'm not always going to want Italian food. I'm not always going to want Mexican food or Irish food or any kind of specific food. So if I've got all these places to choose from and they're right together, eh, it's easy for me to go there and pick the one that I want. Sometimes that's my restaurant. Sometimes that's your restaurant. So we all get along. So get that out of your head that it's always competition. It is not always competition. The next thing I would say is there might be certain authors that you like, certain books that you want to read. Why not read those books and then get in touch with those authors? I will tell you right now that nothing makes me happier than when somebody listens to this podcast and says, uh, Michael, can you answer a question for me? I'm like, oh my God, somebody actually listens. I would love to answer a question for you. Authors are the same way. By the way, I'm going to turn all my podcasts into a book and uh, get it to you guys. So as an author, I would be more than happy if you call me up, email me, do something and say, Michael, I read this in your book. Can we talk about it for a minute? And I'm like, oh, sure. Let, let's, yeah, I would love to talk to you. So don't be afraid to approach people. Everybody loves to talk about their own work. And I, in my case, I will tell you, I love to help people. And I'd like to help you fulfill your work also. So find those people that you want to be in touch with and talk to them. You will learn something from them. They can learn something from you. And we all grow together. So the whole trick, now that you've gotten rid of the negativity in your life, is to fill that space with something positive that is going to move everybody forward. Move you forward, move them forward, move the world forward so that we all get along and we all build and become the strong people that we should be. I bet you thought it was going to be a lot harder than that, didn't you? 
It's not. It really is about taking the initiative to, one, figure out what it is that you want. You have to be clear on that. If you're not, go back and listen to some of the podcasts that I've done on focus and decision making. You have to cut things off so that you can decide, decide what you want to do and go for it. Once you've decided, absolutely go for it. Reach out to the person that wrote that book, that did that TV show, that made some impression on your life and get in touch with them. You'll be glad you did and they'll most likely be happy to talk with you. So once you get rid of the negativity, get rid of those people and defreak them, defreak your TV, defreak your internet connections, now you're free to fill that space with whatever you want. Take your time and decide well. It's up to you what you put into your mind or bring into your life. I'm Michael Jackson. Peace.